We're meeting with an archaeologist to find out exactly what is available on the market here in London. Looking at these pieces, how do you as an expert know that you can assume this is recent and this is from Syria? It's like buying a car. You, just by looking at it, you can tell what's, what's a British car versus an American car. And so it's the same idea. You look at the shape, you look at the insignias, the kind of diagnostic features that tell you where it potentially is from. So that's the first step. You know it's coming from regions in which ISIS is operating. The second step is the much harder step, which is when did it come here? That's hard to determine. There's little to no documentation in them. Most of them don't even say absolutely anything. How do you think realistically do they make it here? These seals are the ones I, I find the most interesting. These are cylinder seals from, again, Iraq and Syria. You can tell by the shape. So here you can, the, the figures, for instance, uh, the kinds of designs that are on there, the kinds of, the way the designs are actually carved into the stones. So at least the kinds of things that are going to be of high demand and, and in terms of looting because they have a lot of value for their size. You can put them in a pocket, basically. It could be an amulet from, you know, or kind of, necklace as far as anyone's concerned in the customs. By the time it gets to here, it's too late, essentially. It's, it's, the chances of, of, of being seized and stopped and prosecuted are almost zero in, in the UK or anywhere, frankly. Uh, so the problem is, is really origining you know, the conflict zone. And, and, and if you can't stop it in the actual conflict zone, then it's basically too late. You can see this is the, the, the mess that we have on our hands. The Met has something and a half positions devoted to antiquities coming to the London region. Now, imagine London is one of the biggest markets in the world for antiquities, most likely. We don't know how much ISIS is benefiting from these kinds of objects. We know they are benefiting, and we know it's coming to the West. That's indisputable. So whatever antiquities dealers tell us is just false. Now, the question is, is what's the scale of it? And that's what we can't measure very easily. And this is just the legal stuff. This is the stuff we can find online. People basically don't know if they're bottom line. So it's... That's the kind of scary thing, I think, is that we could be funding these groups without even knowing it. Earlier this year, the UN Security Council put in place a ban on trading illegally obtained antiques from Syria and Iraq. But obviously no rules apply to ISIS. And with tracking the artifacts far from a priority for officials in countries where they end up, like the UK, the problem of deaths of antiques making it into Britain and elsewhere is yet to be efficiently addressed. Anastasia Cherkina, RT, London. Still ahead, a little later in the program, switch.